December 2025 Tesla sales crashed 23%, worst in four years. Stock response? All-time high at $490. Wall Street knows what's coming. Right now, 16 cybercabs sit crashed at Giga Texas. Validation complete. No steering wheel, no pedals, just a 21-inch screen, wireless charging, and autonomy hardware already running unsupervised in Austin. The inside? Revolutionary. The economics? A $2 Uber ride dropping to 20 cents isn't theory anymore. But here's the real shock. Tesla isn't selling these. They're keeping every vehicle, running their own fleet, taking 100% of revenue. Let's dive right in. Let's break down why Tesla's stock is defying gravity while sales crater. Traditional automakers sell you a car once, pocket maybe $8,000 profit, and move on. Tesla's playing a completely different game now. Each cyber cab, operating 20 hours daily at 30 cents per mile, generates $180 to $220 in revenue. Subtract $15 electricity. $10 maintenance reserves, $5 insurance. You're left with $150 profit per day, per vehicle. That's $54,000 annually from one robo-taxi. Now multiply that by 100,000 vehicles in Tesla's own fleet. You're looking at $5.4 billion in pure operating income every single year. Compare that to selling a $45,000 Model 3 once. The Cybercab earns back that one-time profit in 53 days, then keeps printing money for years. This is why Morgan Stanley projects $20 billion in annual robo-taxi revenue by 2030. But here's what most analysts are missing. Tesla doesn't just build the car. They own the platform, the software, the charging infrastructure, and now the entire taxi network. No Uber taking 25%. No driver getting 60%. Just pure margin flowing straight to Tesla's bottom line. Is this sustainable? We'll get to the risks. First, you need to see what's actually inside these vehicles. That 21-inch frameless touchscreen isn't just for show. In a vehicle with no steering wheel, that screen becomes your entire interface. Destination selection, entertainment, emergency controls, everything runs through it. Tesla sourced these displays from Samsung, specifically engineered to operate 20 plus hours daily without burn in. Standard car displays aren't rated for this kind of punishment. The inductive charging system is where things get interesting. Traditional EVs need someone to plug them in. Cybercab parks itself over a charging pad. No human intervention required. LG developed this system to deliver 19 kilowatts, enough to add 30 miles of range in 20 minutes. Think about the operational efficiency. A taxi that charges itself between rides never sits idle, waiting for a driver to plug it in. Full self-driving hardware 4.0 is the most advanced sensor suite Tesla's ever built. We're talking 12 cameras, upgraded processing power, and redundant systems for critical functions. This car has to handle rain, snow, aggressive drivers, pedestrians crossing mid-block, construction zones with contradictory signage, all without human backup. But here's what shocked me in those leaked trunk photos from December 21st. That redesigned trunk shows rugged commercial-grade lining, not soft carpet. Removed side humps for aerodynamics. Powered struts so the trunk opens itself. Why does this matter? Because a regular car operates maybe two to three hours daily. Its trunk opens five times a week. Cybercab will run 20 plus hours daily. Trunk opening 50 times per day. Every hinge, latch, seal has to last 10 times longer than normal consumer vehicles. 
This isn't concept car thinking. This is production engineering for durability under extreme use. When you see these details, you realize Tesla's not just building a cool prototype. They're building a machine designed to operate like a commercial truck, relentlessly, profitably, for years. October 10th, 2024. Elon unveils CyberCab at the Wii Robot event. Reaction? Skepticism. Another Tesla concept we'd never actually see. The company's been promising full autonomy next year, since 2016. Why should this be different? December 7th, first public sighting. Golden Cybercab, Texas manufacturer plates, driving through downtown Austin during rush hour. No safety driver, no temporary steering wheel installed. Just empty driver's seat, navigating real traffic. December 15th, multiple sightings in Palo Alto and Fremont, California. Different colors, different routes, all on public roads. Tesla's not hiding these anymore. December 18th, drone footage from Giga Texas reveals 16 cybercab prototypes lined up for crash testing. Let me pause here because this is critical. Automakers don't crash test 16 vehicles unless they're weeks away from final regulatory validation. Each crash test costs $150,000 to $200,000. That's $3.2 million in destroyed prototypes. You don't spend that unless production orders are real, timelines are locked, and contracts are signed. Those crashed units? Airbags deployed correctly. Side curtain airbags functioned. The structural battery pack, which also serves as the crash structure, performed as designed. This is actual validation, not marketing hype. What changed in 75 days? Everything. Tesla went from concept unveiling to validated hardware undergoing regulatory crash testing. The supply chain mobilized. Samsung's delivering displays, Panasonic's producing battery cells specifically formulated for 24-7 cycling, different chemistry than regular Tesla batteries to handle constant charging cycles, LG's building inductive charging systems at scale. Companies don't invest hundreds of millions in specialized components for vaporware. They invest when production orders are placed and contracts are signed. That money's been spent. The supply chain is committed. Traditional car manufacturing is linear. Chassis moves down assembly line. Workers add parts in sequence. Model Y takes 34 seconds per station. Tesla's targeting under 10 seconds per station for CyberCab. How? Instead of one long assembly line, imagine six separate stations building different sections simultaneously front section with sensor array and crash structure, passenger cabin with seats and screen, rear section with motor and suspension, structural battery pack forming the floor, roof assembly with that controversial membrane design. Final assembly brings everything together. Here's why this matters beyond just speed. Traditional sedans have roughly 30,000 parts. Cybercab targets around 15,000, closer to a golf cart than a modern car. Fewer parts means fewer failure points, fewer suppliers to coordinate, dramatically lower costs. Tesla estimates they can build each Cybercab for under $25,000, less than half a Model 3's manufacturing cost. But there's another advantage nobody's discussing, quality control. When you build in sections, you test and validate each section independently before final assembly. Traditional manufacturing doesn't discover problems until the car's nearly finished. With unboxed process, you catch issues at section level, reducing waste and rework dramatically. The membrane roof design keeps me cautious, though. Traditional cars have steel pillars and rails, CyberCab uses structural membrane with strategic reinforcements. Lighter, stronger, 
in theory, but it's never been crash-tested in production vehicles before. Those 16 crashed prototypes? That's Tesla proving it works under real-world impact scenarios. Recent leaks show massive single-piece castings coming out of Giga Texas's 9,000-ton casting machines. Front and rear sections, bigger than Model Y castings, requiring precision within 0.5 millimeters across a 3-meter component. This is manufacturing at the absolute edge of what's currently possible. Here's the reality check. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration requires steering wheels and pedals. Federal law currently allows only 2,500 exemption vehicles per manufacturer per year. Tesla needs approval for hundreds of thousands. Texas has granted preliminary state approval for unsupervised operation in Austin, San Antonio, and Houston metro areas. That's 7 million potential riders. Good start. California, Tesla's largest market, is moving slower. Despite testing in Palo Alto and Fremont, full commercial approval hasn't been granted. San Francisco, Los Angeles, these cities are where robotaxis will make or break financially. Every autonomous vehicle company has hit unexpected delays. Crews had to shut down after an accident. Waymo took 15 years to reach commercial operation. Weather testing alone takes months. We've seen cyber cabs in Texas sun. What about Minnesota snow? Seattle rain? Those sensors operating 20 plus hours daily in Arizona heat? Texas humidity? Will they last five years? Ten years? I've been skeptical of Tesla's autonomy promises for years. But three things changed my view. First, they're already operating unsupervised in Austin. Not demos. Regular operation with Tesla employees as passengers. Zero human drivers. This isn't simulation. It's real-world validation happening now. Second, the crash testing completion. You don't destroy $3.2 million in prototypes for publicity. That's genuine regulatory validation work. Third, the supply chain commitment. When Samsung, Panasonic, and LG invest in specialized production for your vehicle, contracts are signed. Money's allocated. Production timelines are real. Could there be three to six month delays? Absolutely. Could NHTSA require additional safety validation? Very possible. But is April 2026 realistic for limited production? For the first time, I'm saying yes. Limited production Q to 2026, expanding through the year. By early 2027, you could realistically hail a cyber cab in Austin, potentially Houston. The economics are too compelling for Tesla to abandon. $54,000 annual profit per vehicle versus $8,000 one-time profit? That's the difference between selling razors and selling subscriptions. Recurring revenue that compounds year after year. But, and this is critical, execution risk is massive. One serious accident during unsupervised operation could trigger regulatory shutdowns. Hardware failures at scale could destroy fleet economics. Competitor pressure from Waymo and crews could fragment the market before Tesla reaches volume. So, let's close the loop. Tesla sales down 23%, stock at $490. Now you understand exactly why. Wall Street isn't pricing Tesla as a car company anymore. They're pricing it as a transportation network that will own both the vehicles and the platform, capturing margins traditional automakers can't even dream of. This is precisely why that $54,000 annual profit per cybercab matters more than one-time $8,000 Model 3 sales. It's recurring revenue that scales exponentially. 100,000 robotaxis generating $5.4 billion annually. That's just the beginning. By 2030, this could be a $20 billion revenue stream added on top of everything else Tesla does. 
But here's what excites me most. This technology doesn't stop at Earth. The same autonomous systems, the same manufacturing innovations, the same unboxed assembly process, these are all stepping stones toward building vehicles on Mars. When you master building complex machines with 50% fewer parts, you're not just revolutionizing transportation. You're solving the fundamental challenge of off-world manufacturing. And this is just the beginning. Next week, Part 2. The 7 Real Risks That Could Derail Everything Snow Vulnerability Hardware Degradation Crime Concerns Regulatory Delays That Could Push This to 2027 Drop a comment. Does CyberCab save Tesla in 2026? Or is this stock rally a bubble ready to pop? This is Tech Revolution, and we dig into the breakthroughs that reshape our future. For the latest developments, you know where to find us. The RoboTaxi revolution starts in 130 days. The question is, are you ready for what comes next?